All right, this next tip is for those of you who are trying to dive deep into expert level territory with your Excel formulas and functions. We're going to talk about how to use COUNTIF along with INDEX and MATCH to help handle many to many lookups in Excel. Now, generally speaking, Excel is designed to work with one to one or one to many relationships. In other words, if you're trying to connect or join two tables together using lookup or reference functions, at least one of those two tables should only have one instance of your lookup value or primary key. If that's not the case, if both tables have multiple instances of that lookup value, then you have what's called a many to many relationship. So to give you an example of what that might look like, take a look at this data set. We're looking at revenue data here, tracked back to an order ID in column A and a store ID in column B. And the goal is to populate this address column based on a lookup table like the one you see below. Now, if you look closely, you'll notice that two of those stores, ID number five and ID number eight, have multiple instances in that lookup table. And because we have multiple orders tracked from each of those stores, we're stuck with a many-to-many -many relationship here. Now, to give you a sense of why this is a common problem, think about what would happen if we used a traditional VLOOKUP or index match function alone on this relationship. You would tell Excel to look up store ID number five, it would search column G in the lookup table, and it would stop at the first instance, return 5922 LaSalle Court, and have no idea that there was ever another instance of store ID number five in that table. So the good news is that there are tools that we can use to handle situations like this. And in the approach that we're about to demonstrate, we're going to use COUNTIF, INDEX, and MATCH functions to actually return values from subsequent lookup matches. So in this particular case, the address from the second instance of store number five or store number eight. So to give you a sense of how this is going to work, let's quickly hone in on one of these cells, cell E4, which is 6764 Glen Road, the address for store number eight, and that's the second address in the lookup table. Now the key to getting that second address is this new column C, the number of instances, and that column is driven by a count if function that's basically counting the store ID in each row and checking to see how many instances of that ID exist in column G of our lookup table. So for most of those store IDs, the number of instances in column C is one, but for IDs five and eight, that COUNTIF function returns a two since there are two instances of each of those IDs. And what that piece of information allows us to do is continue writing an index and match function like we normally would, but instead of stopping at the first match of the store ID, we're able to jump down to subsequent rows in cases where there are multiple instances of that ID in the lookup. So in this case, we're matching store ID number eight, jumping down one additional row, and pulling in the resulting address, 6764 Glen Road. Now, very important note here, you've got to understand why there are multiple instances of your key. And it's very important to confirm that they are in fact valid records. Because many times when people run into this many-to-many -many relationship issue, it's indicative of deeper problems with their database. In which case, formula workarounds like this really won't help solve the root issue. That said, there are some common use cases that do create situations like this. One example is if you're tracking historical changes within an existing lookup table. So maybe you have a product whose price changed over time in which case you've got the same product ID, but one of its attributes, in this case, retail price, has changed. Or maybe in the case that we're looking at here, store number five and store number eight moved locations, but we wanna track it as the same entity. Both of those are potentially feasible explanations for why we could run into a relationship like the one we see here. So with that, let's jump into Excel. We'll open up our pro tip workbook and let's see what we can do with one of these many-to-many -many relationships. All right, so from our table of contents, you're gonna to head to your green formula tip section, look for the many-to-many -many lookups demo, go ahead and link right out to that sheet. And here we've got revenue tracking based on order IDs mapped to a given store ID here in column B. 
And like we talked about, we're going to try to populate this address column using the lookup table here in columns F and G. But remember, the catch is that we've got two stores here, five and eight, with duplicate rows in the lookup table. So if we were to write a traditional index match function, for instance, we're going to index that lookup range, right, from F through G, lock it in. The row number that we want to move to is wherever we're able to match that store ID in B2. And out of habit, I'm going to lock the column B. And where are we trying to match that store ID? Well, we're trying to match it in the list of store IDs in column F. Lock it in, comma over, exact match, and close that match function off. So we're indexing that range. We're moving down to the row in which we match the store ID. And the column that we want in this case is column number two. And that should do it for the index match function. Press enter and apply it down. And just like you'd expect, we're getting the correct values for stores 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 9, and 10. Store 2, Kat and Zara away. Store 6 is Mitchell Canyon. Here's the catch. Store 8, Buena Vista, which is the first instance. Store 5, LaSalle, again, first instance. So on its own, this index match function, same with the VLOOKUP, had we gone that route, has no clue that these rows even exist in the lookup table. So we need to build another piece of information to help us account for that. And that's where that instance column comes into play. So I'm going to add a column here between B and D. I'm going to call it the number of instances. And it's as simple as a count if function. And the range in which we're counting is the store ID range from the lookup. We'll lock that in. And the criteria, what we're trying to count within that range, is our store ID, in this case cell B2. So close it out, enter it in, and drag it down, and there we go. So now we've effectively flagged or labeled the store IDs that show up more than once. Everything in here is a 1, with the exception of our 8s and our 5s, which is exactly what we'd expect to see here. And now that we have this additional piece of information, we can utilize this data and integrate it into our index match function to jump down one extra row, but only for those store IDs, only for five and eight. So how can we do that? Well, if we look at our index function, the row number argument, which is where our match function lives, is what's telling Excel which row to pull data from. So we need to append some value after this match function to jump down one additional row for stores 5 and 8. And we'll need to do that by using this new number of instances column that we just created now in column C. But if we were to just add the value from column C, take a look at what that's going to do. It's actually going to jump one extra row for every single store and two extra rows for stores 5 and 8. And if we were to do that, as you can see, everything gets thrown off. So store 2 is now returning Ramsey circle, which is one off. Store 10 is returning a ref error because it's pushing it outside of the lookup range. And then for 5, we're still getting the wrong answers because now we're finding the first instance of 5 and jumping two more rows down, which is more than we need. So with a quick adjustment here, all we need to do is instead of adding C2, we're going to add C2 minus 1, close the parenthesis, and hit enter. And now check this out. Perfect. So now all of our other stores, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 9, 10, are returning the proper values. And now look at this. Store 5, 490, Risden Road, which is the last or the second instance of ID number 5 in that lookup. Number 8, Glen Road, exactly what we're looking for. So you can continue to customize this as much as you'd like. You can add additional logic, you can nest additional functions, but hopefully this gives you an idea of how some of these tools like countifs and index and match can be used to accommodate cases where you might have many-to-many -many relationships like this.